Alright, update on my aquaponics setup. Uh, I've got all the plumbing complete. I've got <clears throat> my goldfish in the water. So it's a little dark in here. Uh, built them a little swimmy thing. It's 3 inch PVC with a couple of holes bored in it. That was from the original aquarium. Uh, there's my Pond Master 350 uh, by Danner Manufacturing. It's a mag drive pump. It only draws 37 watts, so uh, the point in the future was to go solar. 37 watts on solar should be uh, certainly obtainable. Uh, the pump drives up the main here, keys off. This is my constant aerator. Uh, and then it splits at another T to go to grow bed here. And there's a union, and it goes over to another ball valve to grow bed number two. And you can see I have some seedlings in grow bed number two. Grow bed number one is uh, empty still, not because of lack of seedlings, but I'm experimenting on this bell valve over here. <clears throat> uh, I've re I don't think it, yeah, I can get this bell out. I've restricted the half inch pipe by putting a cap over the top of it and drilling a 716 hole in there. Um, what that does is, one, by putting the cap on there, it makes the water line come up higher because the sand pipe is now operationally higher. Um, so I'll have to add a little more hydrogen to this grow bed because the water comes up to right about here, just under like one bead's height. <clears throat> Got a drain cycle about to kick over here. Um, let's see. So that that seems to be working well because um, when when you adjust these, you have to get them all in equilibrium, the different uh, ball valves, and I wanted to be able to restrict the flow on this one. Uh, I think I will. This is working out nicely. It has increased the time that the tank tanks uh, takes to fill. That's nice. It also increases the time it takes to drain. Um, before on that regular half inch I was getting about a four and a half to five minute fill cycle and then the drain cycle was quicker. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit quicker. Um, let me see what else. I, if I stand back here, you can see I just built a quick frame and got some, you know, eye hooks. That's a, another used, uh, the other portion of the shower curtain that I used here. I cut 21 inches off of it and put the hooks on there in the eye holes. Uh, just to <clears throat> create a splash guard because the, the constant aerator was splashing up against the, uh, the wall a lot and the drain cycles were splashing out the sides and this I wish I had thought this MDF out a little better. Um, the MDF's a little prone to water damage. Now let me see, let me see, let me go over my seedling. What do I got here? Um, in the back I have, uh, these are like snap peas or sugar peas. I have some basil here. The basil's really tiny right now, but you can see it. There and there. There's one there. Um, this is gem lettuce, I believe. Some type of lettuce. And this is cucumbers. The cucumbers are going bonkers. I will probably have to move these because each group looks like about two separate plants. Um, that's going to be overgrown quickly. Um, let me see here. I got about 10 goldfish in about 40, 42 gallons of water. Um, I bought a pH and nitrate test kit today. Let me see if I get that puppy out. This was a little pricey, man. I, I didn't realize these were so much, but I opted for this one um, with the liquid because 
all the little test strips, yeah, they were a lot cheaper, but it was, you know, they'd, they'd run out faster. Um, I wasn't willing to pay like $17 for something that I'd only have for a week, whereas this has like uh, 800 test uses for, I think it was $30. So that does nitrite, nitrate, pH, and ammonia, which is everything that I need to test. Um, what I've read is the fishies, <clears throat> gills, and uh, poop create ammonia. And basically, if your ammonia level's too high, the fish, of course, are going to die. But what you do is you just stop feeding them for a day until the ammonia levels calm back down. The poop gets sucked up through the grow beds and into the grow media. And bacteria from the natural environment, water, or air infiltrate and they convert the ammonia into nitrite and then a different bacteria converts it to nitrate so those tests are for this um, pH is also uh, good to test for what kind of plants you can grow I don't know what kind of uh, I'm gonna have to look into that because um, I really don't have a lot of knowledge about gardening I know lettuce is around a pH 7 but I don't know if lettuce is gonna mix good with peas or cucumbers and I'm, I'm kind of dubious about using a fruiting vegetable in an uncycled bed in the first place, but we'll see what happens. Um, I do want to point out another thing. I Down here on the drains, you can see I put in some uh, commercial or industrial grade plumbing standoffs. These are usually uh, ceiling hangers. This would be upside down in a normal setting. Um, <clears throat> What was happening was I put some pipe strap on there and that gave the drain a negative rise to run like this. And what happened was, I saw another YouTube video about this and I don't want to say the wrong thing here, but I think the guy in that video had the wrong idea. He was blaming the problem that I saw on his tube in the siphon not breaking the siphon correctly, I think he misdiagnosed that because when it had a negative rise to run, and I also experimented with putting a trap on here to catch any hydrogen that fell in here, both cases you end up with a scenario where your siphon drains down to about the height of the, the bulkhead fitting and then it fills up about four or five inches but there's still like a semi siphon going on and it drains and fills and drains and fills only about half of the grow bed. That, I have found, is completely reproducible to a negative rise to run, that being your drain being higher than this elbow, or having a trap here, which tells me that the water can't push through and you can't suck enough air through, through the pipe to break the siphon. The siphon's not only broken <clears throat> in the bell up top, but it's also broken by drawing air through this orifice. And so I've had some trouble here when the pipe strap was on here. I had to loosen the pipe strap, and then I put this standoff here. On the other one, I'm experimenting with that one to get that <clears throat> level. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, what's known as a loop vent on the one on the far side. A loop vent is used when you plumb in an island in a kitchen or you have um, some sort of uh, drain that does not have access to a vent. You build a loop, what's called a loop vent, and basically it would be a T here. Well, actually, this, this whole section would have to move down, but you'd have a T on top of that 90 elbow and you'd have two pipes running all the way to the end and then a 90 on top and a T on bottom. So it would be like two parallel pipes. And what that would allow is the water to drain down the bottom pipe and the air to suck up through the top pipe and get up. Uh, I, I'm gonna try that on the other one. And I'm about to run out of time, so that'll have to do it. I got <clears throat> some seedlings starting over here. I got broccoli, peppers, squash, uh, tomatoes, spinach hasn't come up at all, lettuce, more uh, different type of peas, like snow peas or something. Anyway, so that's the status later.